Hi, Dr. Barrett here. Today I'm going to talk about acid reflux, what it is, why it occurs, and what you can do about it. Acid reflux is a condition in which stomach acid escapes from the stomach and comes back up the esophagus. This can be very painful and cause distressing symptoms like a burning feeling in your chest, coughing, belching, difficulty swallowing, and indigestion. It can even cause some people to feel quite anxious. Symptoms tend to worsen when you're laying down. Acid flows back up the esophagus. It can cause a choking sensation and cause you to wake up coughing. Acid reflux is a very common condition and is estimated to affect about 65 million people in the U.S. at least once a week, with millions of people taking medications to suppress the acid and turn off the symptoms. While this provides immediate relief, it may not be in their best long-term interests. When stomach acid is reduced, the body can experience a gradual decline in health due to malabsorption of nutrients. For example, low stomach acid impairs the body's ability to absorb calcium. With several studies showing increased risk of osteoporosis, hip and vertebral fractures. Other studies have shown reduced absorption of iron, magnesium, and vitamin B12. Symptoms of B12 deficiency can include nerve problems, falls, depression, and altered thinking. To understand a natural approach to acid reflux, it helps to consider the underlying body functions. The purpose of stomach acid is to break down food, to provide your body with the nutrient, nutrition it needs for growth, repair, maintenance, and energy production. Digestion starts in the mouth where food is mechanically broken down by chewing and is mixed with saliva. Swallowed food then goes down the esophagus, passes through the lower esophageal sphincter, and enters the stomach, where it is mixed with stomach acid and other digestive juices, forming a pulpy, acidic fluid called chyme. At the bottom of the stomach, chyme passes through the pyloric sphincter into the small intestine, where it is further processed and then passed along to the colon. All the while, nutrients are removed till the residual is finally excreted through the rectum. During digestion, food enters the stomach and is prevented from refluxing up by a muscle called the lower esophageal sphincter. The lower esophageal sphincter works like a pressure switch. It opens when in response to the pressure of food coming down. Food exits the stomach through the pyloric sphincter on the bottom. The pyloric sphincter is more like a chemical switch. It opens when the partially digested food in the stomach reaches the proper level of acidity. If there is insufficient acid, partially digested food is trapped in the stomach, producing gases and collecting fluid. Pressure builds and a small amount of the stomach contents reflux back up into the esophagus. This drags stomach acid up, causing symptoms. Eventually, the pyloric sphincter fatigues and allows partially processed food to pass through. Improperly processed food is a source of nutritional deficiency in lower bowel problems like constipation, and gas. Simple lifestyle changes made big changes for many of my patients. No one step seems to help everyone, so I encourage you to try these three things and see which one might help you. Number one, reduce stomach distress by simplifying the work of digestion. Each class of food requires a specific stomach environment for optimal digestion. For example, pepsin and increased hydrochloric acid or stomach acid is necessary for protein digestion. While starches require amylase and less stomach acid. Fats need to be treated with stomach acid and bile. Proper food combining allows the stomach to work more efficiently by addressing similar foods at each meal. The basic rule is that starches and proteins don't go together. Vegetables go with everything and fruit should be eaten alone. A sticking point is the, to stop combining protein with starch and bread. But most people will feel better and lose some weight if they reduce their bread intake and especially stop eating bread with protein. Here are the rules for food combining. First, combine protein, that would be meat, fish, eggs, and dairy and beans with vegetables but not starch. Second, combine starch, bread, pasta, potatoes, and rice with vegetables but not protein. And third, fruit should be eaten alone. This one step has helped a tremendous number of patients. Here's another one. 
Especially, you can use especially if you have acid reflux at night. Elevate the head of your bed about 30 degrees up from the waist if you're experiencing symptoms at night. There are several ways to accomplish this. You could use a foam wedge which can be purchased from a medical supply store. A 12 inch wedge provides an elevation of about 30 degrees. Or you could try getting an adjustable bed. This is the most expensive but probably the most comfortable. You could also try sleeping on a recliner, just a beach recliner, which is sort of like an adjustable bed to see if that's going to work. Or if you have a child, you can place blocks underneath the top of the bed frame, elevating the bed about 10 degrees. This is the easiest way to elevate the bed for children. The uh, 10 degrees is a little bit less than we desire, but because it elevates the whole bed, this prevents uh, the person from sliding down and having excessive foot swelling. The third trick you could try is Bragg's apple cider vinegar. This is an inexpensive way to improve digestion. Just have a, a glass of water with one tablespoon of Bragg's apple cider vinegar before each meal. If you're eating out, you can try a cup of warm water with some lemon juice squeezed in. Well, I hope these simple steps helped you live a healthier, happier life. I look forward to your feedback. That's all for today. This is Dr. Barrett signing off, yours for health naturally.